in church. Thanks for accepting my invitation this morning. Beautiful audience here tonight. I know it's not easy coming back out at night sometimes because some of us live a far way out. But God will bless you for being here. Amen. People choose to do what they want to do, and we have chosen to be in the house of God. Amen. So thank God for that. We had a wonderful service this morning, yes. and the Lord met with us indeed. So we're happy that you're here with us. Sister Lowe's family is back with us again tonight. We're happy to have you with us again tonight. May the Lord continue to bless you. Those are watching online, we hope that something will be said tonight will not only enlighten you, but help you to change your mind and your hearts towards God. We need God now more than ever, without a doubt. We can't do without Him. I wouldn't even try. I wouldn't even try. So we're happy that you're here, and we're happy that the Lord has given us another opportunity of which to meet in His house. And we're only here to do one thing, and that's to praise and to worship God. That's it. Nothing else. And we've got to get out of this service what you put in. So I beg of you to block everything else out of your mind that is on the outside. What's there will be there when you get out, I promise. Matter of fact, more will be there. So leave it there till you get outside. Don't worry about a thing until you get out of the house of God. And when you get out of the house of God, God will help you deal with those things when they're out. Praise the Lord. I, I'm going to do something a little different tonight. I don't want us to reverently stand. Um, I'm going to open with a song, a chorus with Sister KK. All day long, and we then gonna have Sister Karen come, Christian, to open a service for me. Remain standing, please. I know it's a little bit of standing, but remain standing after the prayer because then we'll have our opening congregational song after Sister Karen's Christian's prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we are so glad that we can say all day long we've been with you. Lord, for you promise never to leave us nor forsake us, Lord. Lord, and you said where two or three are gathered, there you would be in the midst of us, Lord. So tonight we know you are here, Lord, and we are here to worship you, Lord. We're not here for anything else but to give you honor and glory for all that you have done for us, Lord. Lord, we want to be quick to thank you for the message you gave us this morning, Lord. Lord, it has put, up, put us on higher ground, reminding us, Lord, that the journey is our responsibility. Lord, we want to pray for the speaker of the hour, Lord. Lord, we ask you to anoint Brother Dwayne from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet, Lord. Lord, give him what you give to us, Lord, what you have laid on his heart, Lord, and let us be receptive to what the message has, Lord. 
Lord, we're only here, Lord, to learn and grow in favor with God and man. So help us, Lord, to focus on this message, Lord. Lord, we want to ask you to be with Brother Ray as he chairs the service, Lord. Lord, and for those that are on their way, Lord, we ask you to bring them, Lord, in safety and in hasty. Lord, we ask you for everything that's going to be done in this service, that it be renowned to your honor, your praise, and your glory. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Number 421, out of the church hymnal. There's a mighty reformation sweeping o'er the land. God is gathering his people by his mighty hand. For the cloudy day is ending and the evening sun is bright. With a shout of joy we Christians all should dwell together in the bonds of peace. All the clashes of opinions, all the strife should cease. Let divisions be forsaken, all the holy join in one, and the will of God is Christians all should dwell together in the bonds of peace. All the clashing of opinions, all the strife should cease. Let divisions be forsaken, all the holy join in one. And the will of God in all be done. All the rest. Oh! 
Number 470, when the roll is called up yonder. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more and the morning breaks eternal bright and fair when the saved of us shall gather over on the other shore and the roll is called up yonder I'll be there when the That sound like I mentioned singing. Just saying. Sorry for the off and on screen. We have um, a little glitch, but we have a new system that just got installed and it's taking its time to work its way and has nothing to do with this worldwide glitch that you're seeing on, on TV. It's not affecting us here, but we have a new system we just installed. So just be with us by next week's God will, and we'll be able to have it completely synchronized. and be able to have our screen back on. Thank God. That was really, really good singing, church. We thank the Lord. The Reformation glory. And when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Brother James talked about a personal relationship with God this morning. Yes. Well, when the roll is called up yonder, we need to say, I'll be there, because that's personal. Yes. We all need to be ready. Yes. Because it could be tonight. Amen. It could be tonight. Yes. We just need to be ready at all times. Be ready for the bridegroom. That's right. Our scripture reading is found in the back of our hymnals, page 469, and it's response to reading number 42, and Sister Linda will come and lead us at this time. Good evening, church. Scripture reading 469, number 42, the gospel for all people. I will read the light print in the congregation the dark. Let us begin. Or sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Sing unto the Lord, bless his name. Show forth his salvation from day to day. 
Declare his glory among the heathen, his wonders among all people. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye, and believe the gospel. Now as he walked by the sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew his brother cast in a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And Jesus said unto them, Come ye after me, and I will make you to become fishers of men altogether. And straightway they forsook their nets and followed him. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Thank you, Sister Linda. So we'll start with our special singing at this time. We'll have a solo by Sister Lowe. Uh, I'm sorry, Sister Sylvia. Um, Sister, Sister, Sister Sylvia Lowe. And we'll, that'll be followed by Brother O'Leary Cranston and Sister Sylvia. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Good night, church. I must apologize. My voice is not playing around Cougar tonight, but I'll try to do my best. <coughs> when I first heard of Jesus, his love and his grace my heart was overwhelmed to think a king would take my place i cried lord i'll go with you every step
the years have drawn us closer my love for him has grown each step has brought me closer to my eternal home and I'm just too close to heaven to turn I'm gonna make it somehow I love him much To fail him now Too much To break my vow For I promise the Lord Church, come on, church. If you if you love him too much, let's do the chorus again. Let's let's all do the chorus again. Yes. I love him too much to fail him now. Too much to Let's not fail him. Praise the Lord. Hi, church. I, I enjoyed my morning service at East End. We had a wonderful time. And Brother Horace and the congregation, we was on fire. So expect no less tonight because we are in the house of God. Under his wing I am safely abiding Though the night deepens and tempests are wide Still I can trust him I know he will keep me He has redeemed me and I So 
meeting yesterday and I opened with that song under his wings who from his love can sever the answer to that is no one once we're protected and sheltered under God's wings no one can touch us don't allow Satan to get there don't let him in Sister Silver what a wonderful song I love him too much he said I promise the Lord I'm going to make it somehow through all of our struggles, we've got to make it somehow. We've got to be determined to make it somehow. And I promise if you're determined that much and that strong feel about the, making it, you'll make it. Yeah. Determination has to be there that I will make it somehow because I love him too much to fail him now. Thank you, Brother O'Leary and Sister Sylvia. Sister Georgia will also sing for us at this time. church. Like the woman at the well, I was seeking for things I could not satisfy. Oh my God. 
Some days we're so confused that our cup is upside down. But we've got to turn it over yeah. and ask God to fill it up. That's right. Every day he'll give us the portion we need for that day and more. So on our way home we can say, thank you, Lord, for my portion today. Yeah. Fill my cup, Lord. Yeah. Fill it up. Yeah. He, and he will. Praise the, Lord. Praise the Lord. Our announcements are as follows. We will be having a young people meeting um, when, this coming Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. Come to, be with, come to be with us in the, our young people's meeting, please. Um, and back next Saturday, it's, um, 5.30 is our prayer meeting, scheduled prayer meeting, and back next, uh, our next Sunday is our regular scheduled service. Brother James also announced, I think, on Wednesday there was a funeral here. I'm not sure who. Um, Mr. Dawson Milano, I think it is. Milano, that will be held here on, um, on Wednesday afternoon. Anybody know what the time is? That's the, 2 o'clock on Wednesday. So I'm, I'm thinking if the family would appreciate having anybody could attend to support them in that funeral uh, coming on Wednesday afternoon. Um, I want to do a prayer request at this time on my left. Please, anyone have a prayer request on my left? Stephanie Hatley. Okay. Okay. On my right. Good brother Horace. Brother Ray, my church. Safe travel. The father and the mother, they do not do well. They do not even care. Also, Miss Jean, who teach her kids in the school, she had her brother die. Go to the insurance of another one going to work. Again, she just did not care. Okay, very well. Brother Ray, I uh, spoke with Professor Sugar with you this afternoon. He said I better shake hands with you in July too. She can't tell me they've suffered through mild strokes. They're still also without electricity. Oh. It's complicated matter. So let's remember that again. Yeah, so I think we keep forgetting that Jamaica was hit with a storm. Yeah. There's still thousands and thousands out of electricity there. So I want to remember them in prayer. We know what it was like during Ivan yeah. to be without electricity. Some of us just can't take being without air conditioning. Yeah. That's the truth of the matter. It's hard yeah. going back to fans. Yeah. You know, Ivan brought that reality back to us, but remember, the, the, the people in Jamaica in prayer, please. Yeah. Church, remember, if, for your uplifted hand and every unspoken request is a request, needless to say. But God hears every, every request, and he will answer them in his own time. We just have to pray and believe. Then we will receive what God has for us. Yes. Yeah, so much death, huh? But that's how life is. We live in a complete full circle. The older we get, the, old, the more people are, have to pass away. So that's part of life. Yes, it's still good. Sure. May the Lord go with you. And we're happy that you found time to spend with us in our services. God bless you. Safe travels. Let us travel and stand, please, as we pray. Ask the Lord blessings. Yes, I requested prayer in a prayer meeting yesterday for Ned Solomon, who was my neighbor for many, many years until he moved to the Brock, and he, his son has requested that we request prayer for Mr. Ned Solomon. Please remember him in our prayers. Our Heavenly Father, we are so thankful, Lord, and so elated, Lord, that we could be in our service tonight to praise and to worship you, Lord, and to feel your sweet presence here with us and your 
Holy Spirit, Lord, that has, has abided with us. We thank you, Lord, for that. Thank you for visiting with us. Thank you, Lord, for your, you always being there for us, Lord. And Lord, thank you, Lord, that you are still God. You are still the same God. Lord, as much as things have changed, thank God we serve a never-changing God. We are so thankful for that, Lord. We take that for granted, but you are the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Lord, you made this world that we live in, and you know it. You know every single one of us, Lord. You know every individual on the face of this earth. As hard as that is to comprehend, Lord, you're such a great God. You're such a wonderful God. You're such a forgiving God. You're such a, 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 a God, that Lord, that, ans that loves us, Lord, unconditionally. We still keep wondering how you do, but you do. So thank you, Lord, for loving us. Thank you, Lord, for sending your Son, and your one and only Son, your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, to die on a cross so that every mankind and human can be saved from sin. Thank you, Lord, for that. Now, Lord, as much as all the requests we've heard of so many sickness and so many people are passing, we, Lord, that we just want to, want, want to come to you, Lord, to, to be with them, Lord, touch their bodies of those that need to be touched. Lord, whether they're sick mentally, Lord, physically, Lord, spiritually, whatever the need is, we actually go with them. Lord, to be with them. Lord, we actually, Lord, to be with us in this service, Lord, and continue, Lord, to watch you and to bless us. Be with Brother Dwayne, Lord, as he gets up here, Lord, to bring to us what, what you brought to him, Lord. We ask you, Lord, to help him, Lord, to have the umption he needs tonight to bring forth your word, that something will be said tonight, that someone be like that old Philippian jailer and, 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 and seek those words and say those words. What must I do to be saved and to seek God? Be with us throughout the remainder of this service. Lord, we've got to thank you for all you've done for us already and got to continue to do. Lord, we especially want to remember the people in Jamaica, Lord, as they're yes. going through this, uh, this time, Lord, without, some without water, some without electricity. Lord, we, we know it too well. It brings back memories of Hurricane Ivan. Lord, and we know, Lord, what it was like. So it's not comfortable, it's not nice. But be with them. Help them, Lord, to, to be able to, to gain some type of comfort, Lord. But especially Brother Shipper, Lord, who has labored in this part of the vineyard for so long. We actually be with him. We actually continue, Lord, to watch on, to bless him, Lord. He was, we, we seen him in, in, in Hagerstown, Lord, and, and he was there, Lord, so willing and keep going. So, Lord, be with him. And if you will touch his body and make him well. Continue, Lord, to watch on, to bless all of your saints all over this world as they, they, as they praise and they, and they worship you. Continue, Lord, to watch on, to bless us as we say thanks for all you have done and what you're going to continue to do for us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You may be seated. I keep forgetting that we don't collect offering, but we do have offering plates, um, our offering boxes, sorry, in the back. We don't use the plates in the back of our entrance of our, our uh, main door. And on the left wing and the right wing, there's boxes. Do as your heart desire. Put what you can for the Lord. Amen. I make you one promise that everything you give to him in this church Amen. will be done for God's work. Yes, we do nothing else with it. You don't hear us having car washes and all this kind of stuff because the Lord has really blessed us. Thank God for that. God. We serve a wonderful, wonderful God. Yes, Thank you for your kind offering and your thanks. The choir will close up for us at this time. Make me a blessing.
That's a request in song. That's right. God, make me a blessing to someone today. That should be our daily prayer, our daily request to God. Help me, Lord, to be a blessing to someone. Praise the Lord. What we can do for others would be surprising. The little you can do that the others would appreciate. Thank you, choir, for that wonderful song. We had a wonderful song service. The Lord was, has been with us and is with us. Now it's come time for God's word to be preached. I ask you to remember, Brother Dwayne, in your prayers, please. Him and I are like left hand and right hand. And I must tell you, we need your prayer. Yes. I forgot to mention earlier in our prayer request, please remember Brother James and your prayers at Big of the Church. He's in a lot of pain with his knees and his legs and everything. Remember Brother James in your prayers, please. The Lord will continue to be with him and strengthen him. Brother Dwayne, may the Lord continue to bless you as we labor together in this Amen. part of the world, in this, in this vineyard that we're laboring in, and the Lord will continue to keep us as one unit. Brother Dwayne. Praise the Lord. Hey, brother. Everything is easy when there's love. That's right. yes, sir. Amen. Amen. So thankful to be here tonight. So thankful to be here tonight and to be a part of this, another divine service. And as Brother Ray said, uh, the song service was very upbeat. Yes, and it really encourages us. So we want to thank the Lord tonight. It's good when we put our whole heart in it. Yes, Makes a difference. Yes, right. You know, God deserves our best. Yes, right. Come on, church. Yes, right. God deserves our best. So when we come to service, we should put our all in it. Forget about what's going to happen tomorrow. Tomorrow will be there if we are privileged to see it. But I believe as Christians, when we come to, to church, we should come to have a good time in the Lord. Now, I'm not talking about walking the aisle, dancing. I'm talking about having a good time spiritually. Amen? The joy of Lord is our strength. Yes. Amen. Amen. So forget about what the outside and just concentrate on what the Lord has in store for us tonight. For me personally, it's been a tough few days. But with Christ in the vessel, we can smile at the storm. When Brother James called and asked me to preach, I was tempted to say, ask someone else. But you know, some little voice whispered to me, that's exactly what the devil wants. Yes. Yes. And there's a hymn that we sing in this hymnal that says, forward, forward, is the battle cry. Onward, onward, to our home on high. But Isaac and those old ships out there in storms, they don't stop. They keep going. And they cut through the waves and the winds, but they keep going. Till they reach their port of destination. That is exactly what we have to do. In this day and age, it's going to take a different kind of determination to make heaven our home. If you have your Bibles with you tonight, I just want to speak with you for a few minutes. From the book of Hebrews, the 12th chapter, beginning from verse 1 down to verse 3. Hebrews chapter 12, a very familiar passage. Wherefore, seeing, we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight, the sin which do it so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and it is set down at the right hand of God, of the throne of God. 
For consider him. Come on church. That endured such contradiction. Of sinners against himself. Lest ye be wearied. And faint in your minds. I would like to speak to you tonight from a question. Would Jesus do? What would Jesus do? You know, throughout life, we are going to be faced with all kinds of circumstances. It doesn't matter whether you're saved or unsaved. Life happens to all of us. And when you least expect it, you're faced with situations that you plain just don't have answers for. And it is in those, it is in those situations that you often turn to someone, Brother Ray. I grew up with a loving dad, a loving father. A man I consider to be a wise man. Because he was a man of God. He was a dedicated leader. A builder. He had a way of connecting with people. He had a way of resolving problems. And troubleshooting through things. That quite often when I became an adult. And I was faced with situation brother Ray. I often asked what would my father do? How would he handle this situation? But you know even our earthly dads. With all the wisdom God may have upon them, they're, they're limited. Yes. And there's only so much that can help us. Amen. Yes. By the way, I consider you to be a, a, an astute man that have experienced a lot of success in life. And I'm sure your children look to you, but there's only so much to do for them. Yes. Amen. Let me tell you something, beloved. When life brings us to the real situations, there's only one who can truly help us, and that is Jesus. Amen. Quite often we think we know. And if you're like me growing up, I was a very trigger happy young man. You had to deal with things as they come. But by the way, as you get older, you learn to be more patient. When situations come and you don't react as fast as you used to. And what that does for you, it allows you to sit back and gain a better perspective of what is happening. What is this situation? Amen. Amen. But the question is tonight, what would Jesus do? Many of us are faced with situations tonight that we just don't have the answers for. But what would Jesus do? Our backs are up against the wall. People have turned against us. What would Jesus do? Would he react? Would he get even? Come on, church, I want to speak to you tonight. Would he render evil for evil? No. Jesus was faced with many situations. With people that he loved who turned their backs on him. Sister, Dor Sister Dorlin, some call him a devil. Amen. Amen. Now I'm talking about Jesus. I'm not talking about just a layman. I'm talking about the son of God himself. Was called a devil. Yes. Yes. Watch less me and you. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Do not to Jesus. What would they do to me and you tonight? And the natural reaction is to complain. All oh, these people are doing me this, doing me that. But what would Jesus do? 
You know what? You know what Jesus would do? He would love them regardless of the situation. Come on, church. Amen. The Bible said he was tempted in all points just like we are. You know what that means? That means he went through everything we're going through today. He was talked about. He was defamed. He was rejected. He was put down. All of these things that we experience. He was tempted in all points. Just like we are. But yet we don't sin. Amen. He was patient. He was compassionate. And yes, he was forgiven. You see, where many of us go wrong is, is, the, is where we try to get even with those who have wronged us. And brother Ray, that is not true Christianity. Come on. The Bible said, envy it, envy not and choose none of their ways Christians take the high road sometimes we have to suffer some things we have to suffer being defamed we have to turn the other cheek we have to go the extra mile but we can't be we can't get even we don't render evil for evil because guess what brother Ray God's Vengeance. Come on, church. Don't think for one minute that there isn't going to be a retribution. God says, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, said the Lord. And there's a scripture in the Bible. Be sure your sin will find you out. Amen. Jesus took on human flesh. Meaning, beloved, that he was human just like we are. He could feel Sister Asha. He could hear. He could smell. He had emotions like we, like we do. He felt disappointed. He felt hurt. Amen. He felt rejected. He felt peace. Everything that we go through. He felt. And let me say something tonight. When he looked over the sin world, he still Night. As he see a special creation wander away from him, he's still feeling it tonight. John 1 and 14 tells us, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. his glory the glory as of the only begotten of the father full of grace and truth brother Ray we hear a lot about role models and you see the carving of these sports figures these rock stars or these reggae stars or what not and a lot of people have them to be Role models. These are fallible people. Filled with flaws. And none of them is even, can't even half make the mark. Well let me tell you something. If there, there is only one true role model. And that is Jesus Christ. But I read there is no sin in him. There is no defect in him. He is perfect in every way. Amen. Amen. Perfect. So if there's anyone that we can go to, 
If there's a measuring stick, it is Jesus himself. Thank you, Lord. Hebrews 4 and 15. We're talking about the humanity of Jesus. For we have not a high priest, which what? Cannot be touched. Feeling of our infirmities. What? In all points, tempted like we are, yet without sin. This is why, Brother Isaac, we should have confidence when we come to prayer. Because the high priest that we pray to knows what we're going through. He's been there, brethren. He's been through the walk before. He's been through the storms. He knows what we're going through. Amen. Amen. He said, let us therefore come unto the throne of grace. There we may obtain mercy and grace to help us in time of need. Is this time of need? I've never seen the world like this. So despondent. People are in a state of confusion. Don't know where to go, don't know what to do. But I'm here to tell you tonight, look to Jesus. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. His sufferings are well documented. Perhaps many of us here who study the Bible can rehash them without even looking into the scriptures. His sufferings are well documented. We find him at 12 years old in the temple. There as he mingled with the lawyers, the astrologers, and they were astonished at his wisdom. Yes. He grew up a carpenter's son. A very humble life. Yes. Not much is known about him. And the scriptures are silent about some of his adolescence. But we find him at the age of 33. Amen. As he began his ministry. Yes. And he comes by the way preaching down. The roads of Galilee, saying, Repent and believe the gospel. He went about doing good, healing the sick, opening blinded eyes, raising the dead, teaching us how to love one another, how to live, how to respect each other. Amen. Let me tell you if there's one thing that was dear to his heart is that. Uh, is that his people love one another. Come on, church. We can't run away from that word. You can't claim Christianity without love. Amen. Love, love, love is the center of the Christian life. And Jesus was the embodiment of that. He loved even those who didn't love him back. Amen. So what must we do when people mistreat us, persecute us? We must still love them. And when we're tempted to go the other way, we must ask, what what would Jesus do? Do you know that the word Christians means Christ-like? We are representatives of Jesus on earth. It's not just about coming to church or putting on our Sunday best. There's a real life that we must live. Not only at church, in our communities, on our workplace, wherever life takes us, we are to be Christians. When no one is around, we're still Christians. When we go to Miami, we're still Christians. When we go to Jamaica, we're still Christians. Amen. 
We sing a little chorus say, I don't want to be just a Sunday going be. I have a religion that chills me every day. Saying amen to the preacher is fine. If all the week I let my life shine. I want to be more than a Sunday go to meeting Christian. Yes, sir. Christianity is not a formality. It's not just a name we carry. It's a life that we live. It's being ambassadors for Christ. Wherever we are. You ever heard that little song, Bright in the Little Corner? Where you are. And you know, a lot of times, you want to brighten someone's corner, just give them a shoulder to lean on. Come on. Come on. Give them a kind word. Thank you, Sister Ganita. Say something good about them. Encourage them. Resist the temptation of being critical. And be encouraging to your brother. Be encouraging to your sister. Amen. For we be brethren. Yes. <laughs> brother Ray. Yes, sir. Remember Lot. Yes. And his brother. Yes. Eh? Yes, sir. A quarrel rose up between these two. And their household. And they started to fuss and fight. Sounds a lot like people today. And let me tell you something. The church is not made up of benches. It's made up of people. Different personalities. Yes. Amen. Yes. Different dispositions. Yes. Some of us are very predisposed to gossip. Yes. And to say, say. Yes. And all of these things. Come on, don't get quiet now. Get caught up in things you shouldn't get into. One of the best things you could do is to shut your ears to gossip. Walk away from it. Because when people start thing, first thing you look to do is to draw someone else into it. And when you know it spreads like a wildfire. Come on. But Lord... Abraham and Lot started, a, there was a quarrel that started between their people. And you know, Abraham stood up. He said, Lot, I love you too much for this. Between me and you, not going to happen. So guess what? You take, if you take the right, I'll take the left. And if you take the left, I'll take the right. But let there be no strife between us. For we be brethren. Come on, church. Tonight. We brethren. Our relationship should be ironclad. We are brothers and sisters in Christ. Nothing should come between us. No one should come between us. Amen. Amen. First Peter two and twenty one. For even were you called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that we should follow. In his steps. And it, it isn't always going to be easy. There are battles to fight. There are storms to wade through. It's not a matter of if. It's a matter of when. Verse 22. Who did no sin. Neither was guile found in his mouth. Who when he was revived. What would Jesus Talked about you yesterday. What would Jesus do? But a Horace, someone, someone that ran you down the other day. But what would Jesus do? 
Says the cat is someone stab you in the back. But what would Jesus do? When he was reviled. Reviled not again. When he suffered. Come on. Then he gave him a piece of his mouth. Then he took out the sword. He threatened not. But committed himself to him to judge it right. In his own self, there our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes are he. You see, when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, and it, the reality set in of what he was about to suffer, the Bible said his sweat came out drops of blood. Humanity, he was human being. He realized that the time had come for him to suffer all of these things. And naturally, it intimidated him in that moment. And he said, Father, if it be possible, let this stop. Of his disciples, at one point before the scene had taken place, Asked him a question. He wanted to sit. At a, he wanted. He got into the kingdom. But Jesus answered and said. You are not able. To drink this bitter cup with me. But I'm going to tell you tonight. As followers of Jesus. We are going to have to follow him through some very hard places. Yes. That's right. Come on. Yes. And I'm not trying to be negative tonight, but I'm trying to prepare you. Because quite often, hit us, brother Ray, and where faith is not in the right place, we want to give up. Yes. And we want to quit the race. Yes. But the Bible said, they that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer. Persecution. Jesus sat there struggling within himself, but he cried out to God, Lord, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. And he did that three times, and God gave him the strength. But during that time, he went to his disciples two times. And they were sleeping. Could not you watch with me? One hour. You see, it's easy to say that I'm a follower of Christ. But can we taste of his bitter cup? Amen. Can we suffer these things and still be a Christian? It's easy. It's going our way, Brother Ray. And life goes through seasons. Season is prosperity. Everything we touch seems to turn to gold. It's easy to be on the mountaintop. But when it turns the other way. And all of a sudden, all of those little things that was going right, gone wrong. The people that were once there in the corner have all but left. And it's just you and God. What would Jesus do? He came and found his disciples sleeping. The last time when he said, sleep on. It's done now. And he went down the hill and there was who? Judas. One of his twelve. Jesus himself handpicked 12. 
One sister major was a devil. Now I want to remind you tonight. All along Judas was carrying on as a hypocrite. Jesus knew who he was. And Jesus knew what he would do to him. And that fateful night. Jesus made a distinction. He, he got down on his knees and he washed his feet. Same way. But he knew who Judas was. And let me tell you something. He loved him just as much as he loved the 11 other disciples. You see, when it comes to love, we have no choice. We must love. That is a commandment. Yes. It's not an option for a Christian. Some things cut deep. Some things are close to the heart. And it stings for a while. But let me tell you something. The most powerful thing you can do when people hurt you is to say, I forgive you. told someone very dear to my heart that I felt had disappointed me. I said, I forgive you. Bygones be bygones. Leave it behind. Move forward. It was the most transformational thing. Your heart is free. Your mind is free. Your conscience is free. Your life is free. Stay on God's side. That's right. That's right. And listen. It doesn't mean that he's going to automatically take you out of that situation. He's going to leave you there to suffer a lesson. Amen. But let me tell you something. One of the things that we need to learn is to be patient in suffering. Don't be too hasty. God is going to teach you something. Show you something. And he has a purpose in what he's doing. He's going to show you the ones that were always been against you. They're going to come out the woodwork. Come on, brother. I'm talking about a process. Amen. He is pruning. He is, he, is, he, he, he is sending us through the threshing floor. And he is separating the wheat from the shaft. And let me tell you, in the situation, you will see who the real ones are. Yes. That's true. The one who will stand by you. Yes. Through the thick and the thin. That's right. When Jesus was faced with this. That's right. He had many followers. Many. Peter. Peter rebuked him at one point. Told him that he would never deny him. And Jesus said when the time comes Peter. Before the cock crows, you'll deny me three times. Amen. When Jesus was apprehended, when he was put on open shame, so-called followers walked away. Some remained faithful, but many walked away. We read in the scripture, the Bible says, from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then Jesus turned to the twelve and he asked the question, will he also go? And Peter again said, to whom shall we go? To whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. He was apprehended, betrayed by one of his own. Turn with me to the book of Psalm.
Turn with me to the book of Psalm chapter 55. And I want you to read from verse 12. And you haven't marked this scripture in the Bible. I want you to mark it tonight. Psalm 55 and verse 12. For it was not an enemy that reproached me. Then I could have borne it. This is a prophecy of Judas. Neither was it he that hated me that did magnify himself against me. Then I will have hid myself from him. But it was thou. A man my equal. My guide. And my acquaintance. We took sweet counsel together. Walked unto the house of God. In company. That was a picture of Judas. It wasn't outside that the threat came from. It was from the inside. Come on. Come on. And sometimes the enemy is sitting right beside you. And you don't even know it. Sometimes it's a tra- friend. Sometimes it's a family member. Uh-huh. Amen. Life has many a call and many a surprises. And let me tell you, you must be Christian enough, Brother Ray, to stand the test. Amen. What did Jesus do? He suffered it. Yes. It was the one who took counsel with me and walked with me to the house of God. Lord, help us. Help us. There's a seriousness to this Christian life. We must be careful how we treat one another. It is never right, no matter how much we disagree, to tear down each other. Disagreements will always happen. We're going to get on each other's nerves sometimes. But we must settle our differences. Amen. Disagreement is never an excuse. For us to destroy each other. That is not a Christian spirit. That is not a Christian attitude. We be brethren. Amen. Brother Ray and I just returned from Hagerstown. What an outstanding revival. The title alone encourages us. Charity never fails. Let me tell you something. Love conquers a multitude of sins. Jesus was able to get through it, Brother Ray, because he loved. He loved humanity. You and I put him on the cross. But he loved us still. And he still loves us tonight. He suffered it for us. He went through it for us. He bared it for us. And he bids us to to follow his example. Yes. Jesus paid it all. All to him we owe. Sin has left a crimson stain. He washed it white and snow. In closing. Isaiah 53, who has support? To whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? He shall grow up before thee as a tender plant, as a root out of a dry ground. He had no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised, rejected of men. A man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. 
We hid, as it were, faces from him, and he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him with his stripes. All we like sheep have gone astray. We turned every one to his own way. And the Lord had laid upon him the iniquity of us all. He was born in an obscure village. He worked in a carpenter's shop until he was 30. He then became an itinerant preacher. He never held an office. He never had a family or even owned a house. He didn't go to college. He had no credentials but himself. He was only 33 when the public turned against him. His friends ran away. He was turned over to his enemies. And, went through, and he went through the mockery of a trial. He was nailed to a cross. Between. While he was dying, his executioners gambled for his clothing. The only property he had on earth. He was laid in a borrowed grave. Twenty-two centuries have come and gone. And today, Jesus. Jesus is still the center, the central figure of the human race. All the armies that ever march and the navies that ever sail, all the parliaments that ever sat, all the kings that has ever reigned have not affected the life of a man on this earth as much as that one solitary life. Jesus paid it all. All to him we owe. Sin left a crimson stain. He washed it whiter than snow. Wherefore, seeing that we are surrounded about so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us and run with patience this race that is set before us. Not looking to this one or the other one. Not looking to even the pastor. But to Jesus. Amen. The author. And the finisher. Of our faith. He's the blueprint tonight. Amen. Keep your eyes. On Jesus. And every situation. That you're faced with in life. Ask yourself the question. What would Jesus do? Seek him out tonight. If you need him, come and find him. 125. Jesus paid it all. All to him, Leo. That's not the one. 145. Let us stand together. The altar is open here tonight. If the Lord has spoken to your heart in any way, some of us may need strength. Perhaps we're struggling with something. Brethren, this is need to be at the altar. From the pulpit to the pew, we need God. These are different times. The devil has, 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 has multiplied his forces. And we need more grace to help us in this time in which we live. He's here tonight. And he wants to help us. Every one of us can use a little more of him, can get a little closer to him. Every one of us could improve on something to be better Christians in this world in which we live. Let us sing.
child of weakness, watch and pray. If you're hurt tonight, ask yourself what Jesus do. If you're struggling, what would Jesus do? He was unsaved friends. Is there someone in this building tonight who's never tried him before? Who's never made a commitment to him? Who's never tasted of these heavenly waters? Why not come tonight? Jesus loves you. He wants to save you, friend. He wants to be your friend. He has the power to change your life. Why not come to him tonight? All to Sin left a crimson stain. But he washed it whiter than snow. Since nothing good have I. My God. The blood of Calvary. Jesus paid it all. Thank him for the way you use Brother Dwayne to yes. rightly remind us. Everything we do in life, remind ourselves, what would Jesus do? And answer that truthfully. Don't answer it with emotions. Don't answer it with what you think it was or is. And I promise you, Jesus will do the right thing. Yes. Henceforth, every single one of us yes. need and have to do the right thing. If you represent Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you proclaim to be a Christian, that's what you need to do. That's what you have to do. Because that's what Jesus would do. Amen. And we are ambassadors for the highest calling that it could ever be on humanity. That is to be a child of God. Amen. The Lord continue to bless you, be with you this coming week, and continue to keep you covered under the blood. Every day I ask God to cover you. Some days the covering will be a whole lot thicker than other days, yes. but he'll cover you yes. under his wings. Yes. We are safely abiding. Praise the Lord. Praise God.
There we will find comfort. Yes. You can't find no place else. May the Lord continue to be with us. Thank the Lord for this service tonight. For his sweet Holy Spirit. There's nothing that replaces the Spirit of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Sister G, would you come forward and dismiss us in prayer, please? May the Lord continue to bless us all and help us this week to have a wonderful week. Come back with us on Wednesday night, God's prayer life, please. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the time in which we spent in your house, for it was indeed good to have been here. Lord, we thank you for the blessings that we received, Lord, and the reminder of the example that you set for us dear Father. May our life be a blessing to some soul each day as we walk this earth, Lord. Lord, we thank you for the message and the messenger, Lord. Continue to keep your hand upon him, dear Father. Lord, keep your hand upon the church, dear Father. Everyone that is in the sanctuary, those that are hearing over overseas, dear Father, wherever they may be, that they heard this message tonight, Lord. Lord, if they have not made their election sure, dear Father, that you will continue to touch them, dear Father. Continue to remind them of their love that you died for them on the cross, dear Father. Continue to abide with us and keep your church, dear Father, safe, dear Father, from the dangers of these worlds. Continue to be with us this week as we go forth, Lord, and let our light shine that others may see Christ in us. Bless us now and in a mark way we pray. Be with us until we meet again. These things we ask in no other name but the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. And we all say...